friends, it's Nancy. Just got a little bit of a thrift haul here this morning. Uh, got just, I slept in, it's Sunday morning, slept in a bit. Um, got my coffee, got my vitamins, so I'm ready to go. Um, did a little bit of thrifting this week. Um, this bag of little crochet motifs, I, I did pay $5 for it. I'm not gonna apologize, because there is different sizes. A lot of them are white. Um, clearly somebody was working on some kind of a project, but there's also um, some acru colored ones, some cream colored ones. That's cream. So there's a lot in here. They need all, they all need to be pressed to make something usable out of them. But uh, these are definitely... Yeah, see I wouldn't use this one. It's too thick. But this one's nice and thin. So I'll have to spend some time with my starch and my iron. That's pretty. Again, yeah, mostly white. A few ecru. This one's cream. This one, this one's made out of yarn. I don't think I'd keep that one. Yeah. So, how many do you think's there? Five dollars worth. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um. Got this stamp for a quarter. Now, whoever had it didn't take very good care of it. But, uh, I can clean that up, and maybe like this little label is fun, this little swirl is fun, like the ampersand number. So there's a couple there I would use. I've got this bag of buttons, I'm not sure what's in it, but uh, green was 75% off. Oh, well, those are interesting. So they're kind of multi colored brown. Interesting. Well, there's a whole bag of those. And again, I could tell that they were a different shape. And um, I, there was a video posted. I cannot remember who posted it, but it was... Um, how to make storage bags out of these old storage bags. So this was full of that gross plastic Easter grass. So when I checked out, I said to the, the clerk, I said, I don't want any of the grass. You can keep that. I just want the bag. It was only 50 cents. So I, uh, I'm going to find that video and I'll share it in the comments below because I would like to give that a try. They looked really cute. Uh, got little bits of some vintage lace. Um, this one's my favorite. I like that it's so plain. It looks really nice as um, uh, the little fibers in the top of the tag. So there's some different stuff there. I can just put it in my pile that I, if I need to grab a little bit I can. This was a doll dress and that, that I've torn apart but it's it's nice and vintage and pink and has rosebuds. I used a little bit of this in my um, the journal I completed yesterday and I kind of found a couple of vintage patterns. So these are from 72 Yep, 1972. So I've seen a couple of um, projects on Pinterest that used the envelopes from uh, vintage patterns. I thought this one was cute too. 
and uh, I'm going to give that a shot. So I've got some things I want to try. Now, what I'm going to work on. Um, today I am working on this book. I have all of uh, the pages chosen. I've got the spine ready to go. Um, and so I've got to do, I've got some lace that needs to be sewn on the edges and I have to put them in order and figure out what I'm going to do with that. So that's on my agenda today. And oh my goodness, I just got new glasses. And I'm not seeing very well. But that's okay. I don't need to see. So what I, another thing I wanted to show you was how I have been repurposing or distressing or altering vintage playing cards. So let's move that. So I've got some vintage playing cards here. Let me just make sure I am in definitely in frame. Let's have a slurp of coffee while we're standing. So, I've seen several different kinds of videos that involve sandpaper and stuff. Um, this one's pretty. The spring flowers. This one's kind of got a gold shimmer to it with uh, flowers and birds. This one's cute. Little, little blue bird. And I think this is a, yep, yeah, it's a Norman Rockwell image. So this is just some tissue paper that had uh, an iron on transfer. So I think this was from the 40s. So we're just going to muck that up. I said muck. <laughs> um, this is a, a old phone book. And I've just been using this to glue on to, and then when it gets really gross, I toss it out. I know I've seen a, a couple of journal artists who have been using um, vintage books and gluing the, folding the papers and gluing them in half to make tags and things, but I don't have any more room for tags. So I'm just throwing this away. Anyway, so I've crinkled this up. And I don't want the transfer, the, the blue ink to transfer anything to anything else. So I'm going to make sure that it goes in the middle. Then I just um, take my glue stick and put glue all over it. stick it down to the transfer paper. I'm going to do that with all four. Oh, this one doesn't have a Hard face. It says Antoinette adapted from an 18th century French textile design. Hmm. Well, it's very pretty.
So I will set these aside to dry. Let's see if I take this off. And uh, so just let these dry, and then I will come back and show you the next step. So I've roughly trimmed um, the tissue around these cards and I've got my camera positioned hopefully in a way that you can see my stitching. Um, I'm going to use a um, zigzag stitch. Just setting the stitch length. Okay. So, okay, I was just complaining about my glasses, so let's see how we do with the machine this far away from me. Okay, just getting my foot pedal in place. So, um, I need a scrap of paper. When, uh, when I use my zigzag, my needle goes in like three or four times and I don't want that to be on my card so I'm just going to let it do its thing on this piece, scrap of paper. See it takes a little bit for it to start. Perfect. Okay. And I don't, I know I have said this before but I've never shown it because I've never had my camera on, on my um, foot plate here. So when you're sewing multiple things don't cut between. Just, you know, pull it a little bit and just let it hang down the back. That way you're not wasting thread, your thread isn't coming unthreaded. Um, Is that a word? And uh, and it's the thread isn't getting pulled down into the guts of your, your bobbin case. Okay, so I'm kind of going to aim to follow very edge of the card. There's a little slot in my open foot here. I to put needle down. Okay, now we're gonna go slow around this corner. this is in your way just cut it off and guess what it's in my way my husband's still in bed I have no idea what time it is 8.24 to go out for breakfast. Maybe I'll get him up and go out for breakfast before the church crowd gets out. Feels like I haven't seen him for a while. Okay, so I've gone over this the line of stitching another oh, half an inch or so. So I won't make you watch me do all of them. So I'm going to continue sewing and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so um, I've stitched around all the cards and I've torn 
the tissue off and I'll, I'll just show you the easy way I use I mean you could go rip it all off I just have this metal ruler it's actually a knitting gauge so you can measure your knitting needles so just to put it along the edge of the card and tear it off it doesn't have to be perfect in fact I prefer perfectly imperfect if we're going to be honest here. So on the back you see it's very raggedy and that's the look I'm going for. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of ink now. And I think I've mentioned before that my new favorite ink is no longer fo vintage photo, it's gathered twigs. So having done the sewing first, that gives um, something for the ink to really set into. I'll tell you why my preference is the gathered twigs. I like that it looks aged but not too dirty. Like if you look at vintage book pages, they're not brown, they're yellowed. And this has more of a yellow tone to it. Alright, so most cards are going to be plastic coated, um, but again the thread is going to capture some of this. Um, to distress it. And this one was really white so I'm inking over the whole thing and I'm just going to leave it and it will dry. Get my light in here a little closer. Now because this has all kinds of wrinkles in the tissue paper I just go lightly over, just sort of um, highlight some of those cracks and crinkles. So that is how I make the card bases to make altered playing cards. Now these are a nice size to make tags um, for journaling spots or a base for doing more collage. So you can layer on some more papers, add some embellishments, whatever you like to do. Um, you can usually find decks of vintage cards at um, thrift stores or garage sales. Um, sometimes they can have a ridiculous price to them. Like they're, I don't know, made of gold or something. Um, and I picked quite a few up over the last few months. So if you don't have easy access to finding vintage playing cards, I do have packages of, I believe there's 45 in a package of various playing cards uh, on my Etsy shop. It's fairly inexpensive. So if you're interested, you can take a look at my Etsy and I will send some playing cards your way. So that is, I feel like I'm missing one. Didn't I do four? One, two, three. There it is. I am missing one. No, it's early in the morning, but I'm still not able to count most of the time. I shouldn't say it's early. It's not. We're usually up at the crack of dawn. Because of the cat, mostly. He comes in and tells us time to get up people. 
I want my cream because I give them a little bit of cream when I get my coffee every morning. And then he wants us out because it's his house. Um, but last night I didn't make coffee before I went to bed. So I've got a timer on my coffee maker and it just, when it starts brewing, he comes, he comes in, jumps on the bed and starts his wowing. This cat doesn't know how to meow. He says, wow. Whoop. Sorry about that. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. All right. So you take care and we will talk again soon.